the Babylonian captivity was indeed a very, very dark time in Israel's history and should be a lesson to any nation tempted to walk away from God, including America. But even in the darkness, God brings the hope of light. God is so faithful. The cry of the Reformation in the 1500s was the Latin phrase, post tenebras lux, simply translated, after darkness, light. God is so faithful that when we go through the darkness, He is still faithful to bring us into the light. And this psalm in 126 represents that hope. So let's read it again. As you've understood, hopefully, as I explained briefly, the historical context as well as the emotional context, Psalm 126 again. When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our captivity, O Lord, and as the streams in the south, those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. He who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Gone is the shame, gone is the weeping, gone is the taunting, for God has restored them. God has brought the captives home. God has given them a second chance. And so in this, I want to draw a connection between that and Advent. So in the time remaining, let me make one Advent observation and conclude with one future Advent encouragement. The present observation concerning Advent in our modern time is that in Christ, weeping is turned to rejoicing. Have you experienced that? That in Christ... The weeping caused by sin and wickedness and evil has been turned to rejoicing and laughter and joy. When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were like those who dream, the psalmist says. And then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. In Psalm 126, we see the aftermath of God's mercy to Israel. After they had been led into captivity, after the city had been destroyed, 70 years later, they were allowed to return to Jerusalem, rebuild the city, rebuild the temple, and become a people of God again. That's what Psalm 126 is. They had been a people of destruction. They had been a people of exile and shame. But now, at the mercy of God, they have been restored. They have been redeemed And they have been given their full freedom. They describe their restoration from captivity as being like a dream. I can't believe this is real. Hope has returned. Vision is renewed. Slavery gives way to freedom. Weeping is turned to laughter. Shame is replaced with shouts of joy. For when we return to Jerusalem, we were given freedom and it's like a dream in this i wonder for you personally those of you watching at home can you remember when christ redeemed you from your slavery from your captivity can you remember when he freed you from your slavery to sin Can you remember when he removed the shackles of guilt and shame caused by your sin? Can you remember even when he broke the fearful chains of of death? We no longer have to fear death. 
absent from the body is present with the Lord. Can you remember when he removed your heart of stone and replaced it with a heart of flesh? I wonder this morning, can you remember when Christ set you free? Romans says this in Romans 8, 1 and 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Freedom. Freedom from shame and guilt. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. And that is worth rejoicing, my friends. But maybe you can't remember because maybe it's never happened for you. Maybe you can't remember Jesus setting you free from the slavery of sin and death. So therefore, maybe today is a good day to ask Jesus to do that for you. God knows your heart. God knows your thoughts. And if you are sincere, you can ask him to set you free right where you are sitting or right where you are watching at home. And we have full assurance from the promises of Scripture in the very words of Christ himself that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says that the law of sin is like, is like an evil taskmaster making us servants to sin, placing us in bondage because of the weakness of our flesh, and as a result we become shame-filled exiles full of guilt, full of condemnation because of our transgressions against God and His law. But when Christ came, He came bringing healing in His wings and freedom through His blood and hope in His promises. As a child of God, we have been set free. We are no longer captives of Babylon. The weeping of Jeremiah has been turned into the dancing of David. The darkness of despair has turned into the light of the glory of God's radiance. As Isaiah says, arise and shine because your light has come and the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. What was once a sad existence has now been transformed into a life of joyful shouting. And we can describe it like a dream. Is this real? Am I really this free? I hope so. I want it to be true. I want it to be real. And so how do we know it's real? Advent. Because Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. It is evidence we can stand on.